Okay, so the other aspect of what Huang was saying that caught my eye and that you included in your article, the NIMS portion of the presentation. Can you explain how NIMS fits into NVIDIA's announcements this week and also just the future of the business model? So, so, okay, so looking back, I was a big proponent of and wrote, like I've been uh, an NVIDIA bull sort of for a very long time because of this CUDA layer. This idea that NVIDIA is is in many respects best understood as sort of the apple of chip making. They, they are not just a chip company. They're an integrated sort of offering that integrates hardware and software. And they're, they make their software freely available, which is, which is CUDA. And, and again, it's hard to program for this stuff. And so CUDA made it easier. It's by no means easy. You ask anyone that has to work with CUDA, it's really, really hard, right? But it's much easier than it used to be when you had to do all the parallelization yourself. And so to help make it easier, they would build all these frameworks on top of like, if you want to do, you know, uh, microbiology, not microbiology, what's the, what's the bio, ge geo, whatever. Uh, you want to do weather modeling. You want to do sort of automotive. You want to do all these sorts of things. We'll give you the set of libraries that, that sort of goes into this and make it sort of a little bit more approachable, a little bit easier. But the assumption and who, who NVIDIA was pitching to at that time were people who would program in CUDA. They would actually go and build out sort of new applications. Mm -hmm. The implication of finding the use case for all this stuff is that the vast majority of people are not going to be programming on CUDA. The, the people that are going to be programming on CUDA are the ones that are actually building, like training these models and setting up these inference clusters. And that's a much smaller number of people whose decision making, they will put forward the investment to figure out a way to maximize their total cost of ownership. So you, I think an analogy here, you go to something like uh, x86, right, for, for, for Intel. And by and large, when Intel's playing in the consumer space and everyone's programming to that, they have this real software moat, which is you can redo stuff. You can redo a bunch of low-level stuff to run on, on CISC or run on sort of ARM or whatever it might be. But why are you going to do that when just the Intel processor is sort of getting faster and faster and it's fine, right? And, mm -hmm. and you can use an AMD processor or whatever it might be. You fast forward to the cloud era where you have these massive astronomical hyperscalers and you have two, two problems for Intel. Number one, there's a lot of low-level stuff that was x86, but it was actually Intel-specific. It really only worked with Intel chips. And so AMD is like, well, it's hard for us to break into the data center because who's going to reprogram all the stuff? Well, if you're an Amazon or you're a Microsoft or you're a Meta, it is well worth the expense to get your low-level stuff working on AMD because then you have a competitive landscape and you can choose sort of the best processor. That goes further to ARM. Like Amazon has spent massive amounts of money getting core level stuff working on ARM so they can have their own Graviton ARM chips that they can make available at a much lower cost yet with higher profit margins. And that's a real problem for Intel. When your buyers become very large, your buyers are heavily incentivized to undo your moat, uh, mm -hmm. particularly if your moat is software. Like they're no longer motivated by it's hard and will cost a lot of money because the hard and cost a lot of money is weighed in balance to spending billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars, right? Suddenly the calculation changes. And so in the case of NVIDIA, this is, this is the long-term sort of issue. To the extent their, their selling goes to these large crowd providers is the extent to which they're losing leverage in the relationship because those buyers are willing and capable of getting rid of you. Not getting rid of you, right. but getting rid of your moat, of, of making it so we're not CUDA dependent. Yeah, guess what? Programming parallelism is really hard. We'll figure it out. We're not going to be completely sort of dependent on you. And, and th that was never really an issue before generative AI because it just wasn't a big enough market. No one was motivated enough to do it. Now everyone's extremely motivated to do it. And, and so, so there's an issue where NVIDIA's had this beautiful software moat, but that beautiful software moat was a function of the market not being that large. And that's why mm -hmm. I called the article waves and moats. There's this wave. If you have a moat, a nice little bit of water around your castle and you're hit with a tsunami, 
your moat's not very meaningful anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. It's completely overwhelmed. And so well, where's... And I thought that your article captured that dynamic well, because to the extent that the rock concert vibes signal that we're in the middle of a gold rush and NVIDIA is at the center, that also signals that like the faster this industry grows, the more incentive that creates for competitors to undercut NVIDIA on price and go after the moat and even some of the hyperscalers to start developing their own GPUs if they can. And so it, it almost looks like a race where NVIDIA is now going to have to try to devise enough software solutions to try to create lock-in regardless of what competitors are offering. And then on the other side, you've got companies like AMD and Intel who are just going to be fighting tooth and nail to get a piece of this market as well not just amd and intel but yeah well amd in particular but also all these companies are building their own ai chips right Right. there's there's everyone's trying to do this so nvidia is doing a number of things all all which i've sort of touched on in various ways today the problem with cuda as a layer of lock-in is that that is not at the most high leverage it's it's high leverage but it's high leverage because it's used by developers Developers are employed by companies and they can do something else, right? It's annoying to switch, but they can switch and they can be directed to switch, right? Mm-hmm. Figure out something else, figure out a way where we don't have a CUDA dependency. And, and so, so that's, it, it, that, that is, go, is happening. It's like people are trying to figure this out. This is too expensive. The part, who can you not tell what to do? consumers the the high end the people that are using it this is the aggregator point this is goes back to our arguments and debates about antitrust relative to these big players the challenge when it comes to an apple or a google or an amazon is that their power is not derived from a captive audience that can be directed where to go their power is derived from the individual decisions of millions and billions of users and you can't easily tell them what to do and so you end up with these you know, all this mess in the EU with Apple is just a replay of the mess of, of the EU and Google is a replay of the mess of the EU and Microsoft, where their problem is the, the, the phrase I always use, they're pushing on a string. They're trying to make their, their fundamental issue is that consumers are choosing an outcome that they believe leads to an anti-competitive market. But the, but the cause is the consumer choice. And so you're mm-hmm. trying to undo consumer choice by regulating the underlying platform. And it's just, it's not going to work. And, and so th- that's and where that's NVIDIA wants to get. That's a great business for Apple. That's a great business for Google. Well, so NVIDIA, NVIDIA so, is so trying to create. They want to get above the stack. They want to give above the models. And so what, the, what, what NIMS are is this idea of like, look, it's hard to actually make this model. It's hard to actually get this sort of thing. Like there's a lot of work and investment that goes into it. It would be better if there's sort of everyone's working together and sharing all these sorts of things. So imagine you have they use Apple, you have SAP or you have ServiceNow, right? And you want to interact with it. Well, you could build some sort of custom integration with it so your company can sort of talk to the talk to the your 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 ServiceNow and get sort of the answer. Wouldn't it be better if there was just a ServiceNow module? You could go get it and you can integrate it and it will link with all the other ones. Why do they link together? Because it's all natural language. Like you don't actually, like this potential is actually very real. This idea mm-hmm. that you can have all these things and link them together. There's a huge coordination challenge with APIs because you have to actually get the APIs right. You have to get it communicated because computers expect perfect instructions. If it's not perfect, it's a bug. The idea of AI is it can get close enough. It can figure it out in the probabilistic that area overlaps to a sufficient degree that you can get the right answer. And so NVIDIA's, you know, what they're saying here, set aside our framing here, just look at it from a consumer perspective, is look, you get it, you company understand AI is important. You want to make this work. Do you want to go hire sort of Accenture or Deloitte to build out some sort of AI system for you? That's going to be difficult. And they're probably not going to do a very good job. And then it's going to have to be upgraded and you're just going to be, no, let's all work together and get like sort of, you could just get this module and get this module and it'll just work. Right. And, and, mm-hmm. and it'll be iterated. It, it's kind of like a, a cloud service. They're, that's why it's called a microservice. This idea, it's an ongoing kept up sort of thing that sort of all works together. And number one, I think there's a there's a market for that. I think it makes sense. Number two, what is the key about this, this market that NVIDIA is seeking to build? All the models they are going to host, all the NIMS will only run on NVIDIA chips. And there's, now, there's your no, lock-in. 
there's no reason that needs to be the case. That is for sure. Like someone else could build this market, right? But that that is more that is broadly. There is no reason it has to be Nvidia only. It is Nvidia only because Nvidia is trying to rebuild a moat. And 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 I, like there's just no sort of ifs ands or buts about it. And they're trying to do it now because right now Jensen Wong could be on stage like a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> And he can get people on board. And so it's just this all-out sprint, this all-out race to redig this new moat that's much further afield from the castle. And that in the long run, people who are so eager to get on board with this AI thing and face real challenges in implementing it and figuring it out, this will just be this will be a, a much easier solution.